Hello, friends. Welcome to the second episode of the Schoolyard Podcast, brought to you by School Specialty. I'm your host, Nancy Chung, a fun loving teacher and content creator, also known as Fancy Nancy and Fifth on social media. And I'm thrilled that you're here. A special shout out to School Specialty, who offers essential educational supplies and complete learning environment solutions to help you transform more than classrooms. This is the Schoolyard Podcast, where the magic of learning unfolds. This is a podcast by educators for educators, hoping to entertain and educate. Today, we're diving headfirst into the fascinating world of esports. Yes, you heard it right. Esports. I know. I know that kids can't seem to get enough of them. With millions of dollars of college scholarships being given out to esports now, plus a massively growing industry, many parents are shifting from their old school views and embracing esports. Especially during and after the pandemic, parents were worried about their kids spending way too much time gaming. It turns out that online gaming provides a great point of social connection rather than isolation. And now that schools have esports clubs, a lot of kids are building similar connections in person in school as well. When I talk to kids at school about their dream job, I bet somewhere around 50% of them would mention something related to video games, whether it's becoming a professional gamer or a game designer or even a streamer, the allure of the gaming world is irresistible to many. So let's ponder on some intriguing questions together, shall we? Are video games really as bad as they're often portrayed? And if there is a future in gaming, what kind of opportunities does it hold? Since its official recognition as a sport in 2018, esports has exploded in popularity within the education realm. With the staggering 8,600 schools now boasting their own esports teams, thousands more offer esports clubs and classes. Okay, fun fact alert. I happen to reside in the wonderful city of Irvine, home to UC Irvine, which proudly pioneered the first official esports program and awarded the first esports scholarships from a public university. They saw it as a perfect fit, both as an extension of their successful computer game science major and as a thriving hub for the gaming community. During the pandemic, when I was teaching virtually, I was determined to keep my lessons engaging and, dare I say, fun. So I embarked on a quest to find digital programs and games that would captivate my students' attention while still being educational and meaningful. And guess what? I succeeded. Using fun programs like Kahoot, Quizlet Live, Gimkit, and Bluekit, I found ways to hook my students' interest. They were eager to play more and more and continued to play, not even realizing they were absorbing knowledge while having a blast. Our guest from NACEF will talk about how teachers are using Minecraft as a platform to teach about agriculture, engineering, physics, and more. But here's the clincher. The growth of esports isn't just about having a good time. It's supported by research that highlights the cognitive development benefits it offers students. This knowledge is crucial for parents to make informed decisions about screen time. And let's not forget about the incredible career opportunities that emerge within the esports industry. Whether you aspire to be a player, an analyst, or even a coach, there's a path for everyone. NACEF's esports ecosystem was developed along with researchers at UC Irvine, and it illustrates how integrating esports into education opens up a multitude of pathways as it requires strategic thinking, data analysis, and application of advanced STEAM concepts. Oh, and did I mention the mullah? The highest paid esports player raked in a whopping $7 million plus just a little more than your average teacher, right? So how does one get into esports and how can we support our students who want to pursue their career and passion in esports? We will be answering those questions and more with our very special guest, Claire LeBeau, the Chief Marketing Officer at NACEF, the Network of Academic and Scholastic Esports Federations. Hi, Claire. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Now, could you tell us who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, again, my name is Claire LeBeau. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at NACEF. We are the Network of Academic and Scholastic Esports Federations. 
Um, and that is a mouthful. That's why we use the acronym <laughs> NACEF. Oh, yeah. Um, so what is NACEF and their mission? And what is your role at NACEF? Sure. Um, NACEF's mission is really to leverage student interest for teaching career and life skills. Um, as you know, if you're able to teach kids in something that they're interested in, that they're passionate about, they pay more attention, they get engaged, they learn from the lessons. So we're not teaching kids necessarily how to be good gamers. What we are doing is helping educators leverage interest in gaming. And then mm -hmm. once you have their attention, now you can teach mm -hmm. them whatever it is appropriate at the moment. Ah, oh, got it. Just in case we have people who don't know, would you please explain to us what esports is? Sure. Esports is uh, competitive video gaming. Um, although I know we have an awful lot of clubs that have teams that play more recreationally, but also there are esports championships. There is a world championship event for esports coming up mm -hmm. in August. And actually, the Olympic Committee for the first time ever is including esports in the upcoming Olympics. So oh, wow. um, it is something that is growing not only in schools, but in traditional mm -hmm. sports arenas as well. Oh, wow. That's amazing news. I bet it's going to be even more popular now. I think a lot of the listeners might be curious about how you got into esports and, and how old you were when you got involved. Well, um, let me first say I'm probably like a lot of the listeners in that I myself am not a huge gamer. Um, oh. I had been working in the area of STEM education and had this opportunity to work with NASAV right when it was very first starting out. So when we first started, we were the Orange County High School Esports League in Southern California, and it was a mm -hmm. pilot program. We had 25 schools participating, and uh, we had UC Irvine doing research into, were we accomplishing the things that we set out to? We thought at the outset, esports would help with things like school affiliation, STEM interests, STEM career identity. Um, and we proved that was accurate because we had UC Irvine looking at how things were going with the students. What surprised us a little bit, honestly, is that students also were developing massive social emotional skills. And mm -hmm. so, you know, kids who maybe hadn't really connected in school before were finding other people with similar interests, mm -hmm. and that was helping them engage in school. And so, as I said, mm -hmm. I wasn't really a gamer myself. I just came to it because I saw the impact on students. And honestly, if you go way back, I, this mm -hmm. will give away my age a bit, but I am mm -hmm. a traditional gamer. I have an old Atari, like the actual box video game with uh -huh. Centipede in my living room. And oh my gosh. Um, so I, I play that. the old school like Centipede, Pac-Man. Those are my games. Pac-Man. <laughs> Mine oh, yeah. my, mine's Tetris. <laughs> Tetris. <laughs> I was gonna ask, yeah, I was going to ask you what's your personal favorite game, but now we know. <laughs> That's awesome. It is, it it is yeah. centipede, yes. <laughs> and I love that how you touched up on students uh, feeling the sense of belonging, you know, once they get into uh, meeting people in, with the same passion and the same interests. That's that's great. Now, I think some people might have some misconceptions about esports in the classroom. Um, have you heard of any misconceptions? Yes, all the time. Um, I think one of the biggest is, I would say there are concerns around screen time. Mm -hmm. And I would say that people are thinking, why are we trying to raise up people to be fantastic gamers? And that is not at all what happens within the framework of NACEF and our clubs. Mm -hmm. um, and let me just mention also NACEF is a nonprofit and we offer our resources completely free. So if mm -hmm. someone wants to start up a club, they just go to our website, sign up, immediately get access to all kinds of toolkits to help you understand how to build out a club. Again, where the focus is more on, um, you know, connecting with each other and developing these STEM interests, that kind of thing, versus necessarily helping them be the best gamers. Now, I will say, mm -hmm. gaming is the attraction factor. This is interest-driven mm -hmm. learning, and you've got mm -hmm. to have the interest to drive the learning. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that gaming is woven throughout, but teaching the exact specific game skills isn't necessarily our objective. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for clarifying that for us, because I think mm -hmm. 
people just think of esports and video games and just all about the fun and all about just the gaming itself. So thank you for clarifying that for us. Those mm. those clubs must be so popular. <laughs> oh my gosh. High school, every school. Every, everywhere. Well, we started, as I said, we started with 25 schools in Southern California and mm-hmm. it became so popular that now we are worldwide and we have clubs all across the wow. United States, thousands of clubs, as well as around the world. We're helping Um, somewhere around 30 countries right now set up official programs for gaming. And so that means that a lot of ministries of education, of, you know, Mm -hmm. high ranking officials throughout the United States, around the world are evaluating this and saying there is tremendous potential to reach students here. And Mm -hmm. again, that's why I'm in it. I care. I just love to see kids in their sweet spot in school. Oh, I love that. Now, what are some benefits of esports in the classroom? Sure. So I mentioned clubs a whole lot, but we do Mm -hmm. also have a curriculum that we've published. Uh, If you happen to be in California, the original curriculum published by NASEP is approved by the state of California. Um, But we also have several affiliates in other states that have taken the curriculum and back mapped it. So it's um, approved and available there as well. But it's again, it's freely available. And Mm -hmm. so, I mean, the benefits, again, number one is the engagement level. Mm -hmm. Students really engage in this. And then number two would be the broad variety of opportunities that exist in esports and in the esports ecosystem. So again, Mm -hmm. just imagine esports or gaming as a magnet, right? So that's going to draw kids in. But now let's think for a minute about different career opportunities they might want to pursue. It could Mm -hmm. go from some of the obvious ones that everyone says, of course, streamer. And you mentioned this, Nancy, doesn't everyone right now want to be a streamer or something like that? Right. We all think, Mm -hmm. Oh, the kids all say, I'm going to be on YouTube. I'm going to make my millions. TikTok. TikTok, Exactly. They don't recognize how much time and effort goes into that. You definitely, I mean, yes, Mm -hmm. the dollars and cents are big, but it's a big effort too. But in addition to that, if you look at the esports world, think about tournaments. There's a whole industry around tournaments. It's organization, mm-hmm. it's hospitality, it's event management. There's a lot of marketing. There's think about the technology in the games. There's game development. There's IT support, troubleshooting. Mm-hmm. Um, think about the creatives who are designing the games and the graphics and doing the, as we just said, the streaming, the content mm-hmm. pr- production. Then there are things that a lot of people don't connect with esports. Did you know that pro esports teams, even UC Irvine, has an exercise physiologist for their staff, oh. for their kids who are playing? Because oh, wow. if you're going to sit and game for hours, you've got to learn uh-huh. how to stretch, how to develop uh-huh. other muscles, how to develop healthy habits. Um, law, there's a big field of esports uh-huh. law that is growing uh-huh. now. I mean, just so many different opportunities. So I think one of the benefits of bringing Mm -hmm. esports into the classroom is that it gives students an opportunity to maybe peek into career fields that they wouldn't have otherwise. Again, Mm -hmm. because they're so interested in gaming and esports, they open Mm -hmm. their minds more than they might otherwise. Oh, um, Claire, as you're talking, I'm like envisioning you and Nasef coming in and doing like like a career fair for our district. Because I don't think parents have any clue. I don't think they even like think about all the things that you mentioned, like right. law, you know, they're, oh, law, <laughs> you know, and um, in, in envisioning like a behind the scenes, you know, where they're like training their fingers and the whole body and, you know, like, you know, that's, <laughs> that would be really, really interesting right. to, to have, like awesome to have in, uh, come to our district too. We would um, love to do that in person. Let me just say real quick in mm-hmm. our, in NASEP's blog, we mm-hmm. have, um, you could search in the topics and the tags, you could search for career. And we have mm-hmm. several blogs and video interviews with people working in a really wide range of careers. So that's a really fun way to get those insights oh, if, if you okay. don't have somebody bringing a career fair to you. Yeah. Okay. That is an amazing resource and it's all free. You said. Yes. Okay. Free and available. I love that. Um, Now, now you mentioned tournaments and Mm -hmm. events. Can you tell me a little bit more about like maybe the the Minecraft events or the Beyond Game Challenges? Beyond the Game Challenges? Absolutely. Um, So funny, you mentioned that when COVID hit, you had to get really creative with keeping your students engaged, right? Because Mm -hmm. they were all Mm -hmm. sitting at home on a computer all day Mm -hmm. long, just mentally checked out. Mm -hmm. And we had a similar experience where uh, we had a teacher actually in Mexico City 
approach us because we are global and said, we are having a horrible time getting students to attend class on the computer. You're the experts in this online world. Can you help us? And so we worked with some of our partners and built out some Minecraft challenges. And they were so popular that they had in that school district, 3,000 3, students start participating in class within the next couple of weeks that hadn't been before. And that just demonstrates how this draws students in. Did you say so, 3,000? 3,000 in, wow. in this district, right? In this wow. district that, uh -huh. that re-engaged with school because uh -huh. they were all of a sudden learning in mm -hmm. a way that they loved, that they related to. And wow. so we took that idea and parlayed it out into our current Minecraft events. And mm -hmm. um, one of those is Rube Goldberg competitions. Do you do you ever do I Rube love, Goldberg yes. challenges? Oh my goodness! Yes. 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 Oh my gosh. Okay, so yes. I um, I coach the robotics team, and one of yeah. our the tryouts, like you know, one of the the beginning stages is we have them create. I mean, not the actual three D model, but like like plan and and try to create one of those challenges. And it's always my favorite. <laughs> it's so fun. See, so now we take that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we put that same competition into Minecraft. Wow. And so students are given a specific challenge. Um, this past year, the challenge was to build a lunch. And so we had some oh, hilarious because okay. the thing about a Rube Goldberg machine, if for some crazy reason, you don't know what it is, it's a mm -hmm. crazy contraption to accomplish a very simple task. And mm -hmm. it's a fun way for students to learn engineering and physics and all kinds of science principles. Mm -hmm. So we had students get so creative in building these machines that would you know, make their lunch, whether it was in some cases a sandwich. One, we had one kid who was feeding his dog, his goldfish himself all through this one machine. It was hilarious. So, wow. um, so that's one example. And then you got to get a little sneak peek at one of our other popular programs, Farmcraft, mm -hmm. which is in Farmcraft, we build a custom world. And so students go into that world and they play. And so we have created the world to give them challenges around, um, how do you, how are you going to plant? Are you going to do it with a, you know, with a machine or by hand? Are you going to water with a drone or a regular sprinkler? Are you going to harvest with a machine harvester or have someone go out and pick, you know, pick your plants, harvest your fruits and vegetables. And of mm -hmm. course, with every decision, there's a trade-off between the cost and the impacts on the environment. And so mm -hmm. we're having them play through the game mm -hmm. multiple times in different ways and learn about, you know, how does a farmer make these tough choices on how much to do manually and how much to do my machine. And then mm -hmm. you'll like this because um, this year, because there have been so many supply chain issues, we added in an element around how are you going to get your products to market? And it was just like Tetris. So mm -hmm. they had to <laughs> oh, yes. decide, yes, they, they had to decide, was it, um, were they going to use a plane or a boat or a train mm -hmm. or a uh -huh. truck to get their products to market? And then they had to try to load just like Tetris as well uh -huh. as possible, those fruits and vegetables. So, I mean, you can see I'm giving yeah. you a few examples, but they're all really engaging mm -hmm. again, completely free from NASAF. That's our mission is mm -hmm. just to take these tools and provide them and make them available so mm -hmm. that students get involved. They're learning the lessons that are, you know, that are expected of them, but mm -hmm. at the same time, they're really enjoying it. And so it just opens up their eyes to a whole new world. I mean, talk about creativity, problem solving skills and critical thinking skills. I mean, these are things that we just can't teach just by opening up a textbook and doing worksheets. Now, what should a school or educator do if they want to start an esports program at their school? I can see people saying like, oh, this sounds so expensive. You know, we can't afford this program at our school. Um, do you have any suggestions? Sure. Um, one of the things that we recommend first is to start small. Don't start off thinking that you're going to have five teams competing in five different titles that might take different system requirements for the hardware. Um, I mentioned our Minecraft programs. Those are free to enter, and we actually provide Minecraft itself to anyone who enters a competition that doesn't have it. And Minecraft EDU runs on, you know, I mean, most schools have Chromebooks, at least now it'll run on a Chromebook. So that's a great place to start where the costs are really low. Um, and then, you know, it just depends. First, start by looking around your school and see what resources you have. You probably have some sort of a computer lab or maybe in the library, there are some computers. Um, 
work with what you have, and then you can continue, open your eyes and see what are other resources out there. There's a lot of grant funding to support technology in the classroom. So take advantage of that. And then as far as just generally getting started, go to nasef.org, N-A-S-E-F.org. And once you sign up, which takes about 30 seconds and it's totally free, you'll get access to our dashboard with lots of toolkits for advice on how to start programs and get them running. And then you'll also be able to join our Discord where other educators are communicating communicating. And that would be a place where you could throw out a question. How did you start your program? What did you do to work with IT on your campus? What kind of equipment do you have? So um, definitely get the dialogue going with other educators who are doing this also. Oh, right. So you're not recreating the wheel. Like, you know, if they have exactly. gone through the same process and gone over, you know, the obstacles and hurdles, um, I'm sure they would love to share how they got around that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. I know it's summer vacation for me, but like, I want to hurry up and get started on this. I want to get, <laughs> I teach at a K-8 school. And yeah. so there's, there's a lot more uh, potential and possibilities. And so whether it's clubs and I want to get, I, I'm thinking of my coworkers who would just totally eat this up too. So I'm going to round up some educators together and get something awesome. going here. Oh, this awesome. is so exciting. Well, thank you so much uh, for being our guest today. Um, I know that I'm going to be reaching out to you with more questions <laughs> and, <laughs> and asking, you know, asking how, like what I can do to contribute to this, um, this amazing uh, esports community. So thank you so much, Claire. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'll just reiterate that we are here to help. If educators want to get programs started, visit nasef.org, N-A-S-E-F.org. You can always email us, info at nasef.org if you have questions, but we are happy to help you. We want to see more students able to jump in and enjoy this blend of play and learning that we offer. Sounds great. Recently, School Specialty, in collaboration with the College Football Playoff Foundation, designed and established an incredible esports lab at Morningside High School in Inglewood, California. Talk about taking education to the next level. To learn more about this fantastic initiative and check out some awesome photos, head on over to the School Specialty blog at blog.specialty.com. Thank you for joining us for the second episode of the Schoolyard Podcast. Remember to pack your curiosity and meet us back in the schoolyard for our next episode. Class dismissed. Tag, you're it. Now it's your turn to write in with a question, which we will answer here on the Schoolyard Podcast for our segment called Tag, You're It. Tag us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter at School Specialty and hashtag Schoolyard Tag, You're It with a question that you want answered. Starting with episode number five, one question will be selected per episode to be answered by our featured guest and myself. If your question is chosen to be answered on the podcast, we'll send you a very special Schoolyard Podcast t-shirt.